Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Tuesday, November the 21st, the year's 2023. Let's talk trading. How I trade. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Um, I had a viewer um, reply saying that, you know, I talk about it's not what you trade it. It's how you trade it. And they said, well, how do you trade? Well, you know, I replied that, um, you know, I've shown how I trade. And they were saying something that, you know, I should basically be doing live sessions. Well, I, you know, I'm assuming they're probably new to the channel and, and welcome to the channel. And welcome to a uh, few more Reddit users that have uh, come on to the channel. Um the thing is, you know, back when I was living in Tucson, you know, I had high speed internet coming to my house. I had five computers online, one computer dedicated just to communications, one dedicated just to programming indicators and three that were had live feeds to, you know, three different brokers. So, um, you know, I was set up to do that. But now I live out in the country on my ranch um, out in southwestern Oregon where my access to the internet is either through my cell phone through Verizon or I have the little Verizon MiFi um, device that allows me to have Wi-Fi here at my house but um, like I can't do um, like Microsoft Teams or Zoom meetings and use video because I just don't have the bandwidth so there's just not enough bandwidth in fact some of you may recall on a couple of times on NFP days how my machine would lock up because I had a few dashboards running and there was just too much data. Um, the uh, It couldn't handle. Um, I just didn't have enough bandwidth. So that's why I don't do um, the live videos. But I thought, you know, it's a fair question and they want to see how I trade and you know, maybe get into, you know, why would I take a trade? Why wouldn't I take a trade? Why would I, you know, take two pips here? And why would I go for 10 pips there? So, you know, we can get into that. And so maybe um, I can show a few things. Well, the first thing is, how do I trade? I trade horizontal lines. When price comes up to a horizontal line that I deemed as a, a line worthy of something, such as right now, 125.25 here, um, we're looking at a monthly chart and and that is a psychological so i know from this spot price is either going to go up to the 50 or down to the double o either 125 50 or 125 double o i just have to make my best guess which way it's going now the thing is it doesn't have to go all the way there for me to make money and that and that's a clue i might not get the full 25 pips I might only get two I might get five I might get ten but um, or I could even get stopped out it might run against me 40 pips and I had my or uh, not 40 pips but maybe 20 pips and I had my stop loss set at 12 or something so that's just what happens but you can see here we had a green candle it was 25 25 so that means price was going up at the line you take the trade now it's all the way up to 28 that's just how simple now yeah i don't have horizontal lines on this chart because this is the monthly but as we go through the other charts you'll see where those lines would have appeared and on the weekly see we we've gone above the previous week's high so that would have been uh one horizontal line for a cross um <clears throat> we're above the pivot and we haven't hit it so and we're still above the weekly open so i'm not even thinking about that pivot i won't think about that pivot until this turns red <laughs> you know that's not going to be a target until this turns red and we can see we still have a couple of gaps that haven't filled here now we look at the daily um and see yesterday was monday and so we have the opening range for the week and once again taking that candle color daily candle color at the line previous day's high 
taken that, that'd be worth 10 pips at the moment. Had you taken that trade, it would have been worth about 40 if you popped off, popped out right there at the top. So, um, you know, that that's the essence of my trading. Horizontal lines going with the candle color. Um, here, uh, yesterday, we hit the previous uh, or the current midpoint. And price sometimes likes to go above or below that. And I usually like to also look at the previous uh, mid. That's That used to be my bread and butter um, trade. But that was a little bit, no, I think it's probably um, right around the, or a little after the time when I was doing the buy zone. Which we'll get into. And then we just, you know, I look at the year. Where is price? You know, it's above the yearly open. You know, it crossed the yearly midpoint here. So there's there's another place to trade. And then I also like to look at the uh, previous uh, month's midpoint. Uh, you know, the previous candle's midpoint, like I said, used to be a uh, bread and butter trade, especially the previous daily midpoint. And I used to do that when I was trading stocks also. That was a, a nice trade, but you can see here, it hit that mid dot, uh, price hit the mid dot, moved up to it, and kept going. And once again, this is on a monthly chart, but also do it on the daily. <clears throat> um, we had an inside bar. That's another horizontal line trade I like to take. I usually take the breakouts on the inside bars, and on the outside bars, I might trade both ways, just depending on, on what I see. Um, and then rules of thumb, you know, I have the uh, candle color multimeter up here. Um, try not to trade against, you know, the candle color. So you can see here, everything below the daily is red. Everything above it's green right now. So why would I go short against these well because there's something called you know the retrace it's good price will make a daily high and retrace price will make a daily low and retrace that's where the rat zone comes in so if i can get you know catch an h4 candle it's usually gonna that could be good for you know 20 or more pips just looking at those those candle ranges and you can see here today we've only got 64 pips of range on the pound and uh, I'm kicking myself, traders out there, because if you go back, I think it was last week when the dollar yen was above 150 and above 151, and I kept talking about wanting to go short. I don't know if any of you you took that trade. I didn't, unfortunately. And you know, there's a couple hundred pips to be had off of that trade. So, you know, once again, how do I trade? Um, I just focus on the pound trading, but there's certain things that catch my eye because I used to just trade nothing but dollar yen. So I still take a look at it, but I'm not actively trading it. But that would have been a, one of those good swing type trades. Um, you know, you, you'd maybe just put a, a lot or a mini lot or a micro, just one and just, you know, call it a lottery ticket. Hey, you know what? I might get 100 pips off this trade. So, you know, you put a mini lot, okay, that's a hundred bucks. And maybe you're willing to lose, you know, 50 or a hundred bucks on it. You know, it's like, it's like a, it's a bet. Um, it's, it, you could call it a gamble, but, you know, based on, on charts, you know, you think the odds are in your favor. And no matter what you, no matter what game you're playing, when you place a bet, you're thinking that the odds are in your favor, uh, something's going to happen. So you can see now we're crossed that 25 um, line. We were just down to 23. Now it's popped back up. And you can see here we're sitting with a big red H1, which that used to be the rule of thumb. Don't trade against H1, even though I have modified that. And now it's don't trade against the M30. Reason being is you can see a lot of times, you know, within an hour, price will flip-flop on the M30. And what will happen is we'll get what I call cover. And that's something, another way, how I trade. So, for example, here, price started to go up. 
It didn't break the lower, only broke it by a bit, turned around, turned that candle green. You look for a price to cover that candle, meaning that the low is below the bottom and the high is, you know, at or equal the top of the candle. This is the top. This is the bottom. This is the top. This is the bottom because it doesn't matter if this is the open or this is the close. That's still the top of the candle. And so you basically look for it for the candle body to be covered sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't and you can see here it didn't but there were still pips to be made if you took that trade now in this particular case you can see price probably went up first and then came back down and when it does something like this you can always look for what i call top scraping where it comes in and it, it scrapes that high the previous high I, I like I call it top scraping, but it's like previous high scaping. Scraping would be a more accurate um, name, but you could maybe short at this level, um, or you could wait when that candle turns and turns red, then you could go for the cover. You see here there was a cover. Candle went down, came back, turned green, and then it covered. So that's another way um, I, I look to trade. So you can see here you had a cover. Here you didn't. But M30s, there's a high probability that they cover. They cover um, a lot. And you can even see here, even though this candle's red, it covered. So that's something else I look for in how I trade. And of course, we've got the buy zone here. If price gets, you know, a certain distance from the open, chances are it's going to continue. Just like if it gets a certain distance away from the open on the downside, it's going to continue. In this case, it hit hit it and didn't. Then you got to close above the open. So that trade's basically a loser, but you can more than make up the other way. And some people used to like to argue with me that you can just get chopped up, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, yeah, well, sometimes maybe you do get chopped up. And they would try and tell me it doesn't work. They were back testing, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you know, when you trade in the moment, none of that stuff in back testing um, is applicable. Because when you look at back test, you don't know what's happened within a candle. A one minute candle could be, you know, 50 or 100 pips. You don't know which way it went. And, you know, they don't have the precise tick data to, to do a back test. So I just let them talk. I don't even argue with them anymore. You know, and as I mentioned earlier about the rat zone, you can see here price put in a low, came in, put in a high, reversed, put in, you know, a daily high. The range was large enough. Um, and so st start taking rat reversals here. And you can see here this last one at 44. And prices shot down. Um, this is based on um, statistics, and what I look for is, you know, twenty percent of the of the um, wicks were probably, you know, or price fell out of this zone like eighty percent of the time. Price was above this zone eighty percent of the time when it closed. So that's what I look for here. That's what the uh, smart rat calculates as opposed to the uh, the the um, regular rat where you can see here the smart rat zone is a little bit less and here smart rat zone is a little bit less so you could get in just a little bit quicker based on you know um, the current data I think we're running a hundred um, hundred days in that indicator but you can set it to whatever you know pivot trading plan this is more of a you know, it gives me a sense of bias. It says here, price near R1 short. You could have shorted at 32 and made pips using the H4 candle. So um, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, pivots are just, once again, statistical trades, looking for directions. But, you know, with the caveat, if the pivot hasn't been hit and it's below the open you don't want to trade till that op till that candle turns red and if it's above the open you don't want to trade that way till the candle goes green you know the uh wick zone in and out of the wick zone price does not like to close inside the wick zone once again a horizontal line trade the candle previous days high candle top uh open and low so fellow traders um, 
or fellow trader. I hope that answers your question about how I trade. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. But always remember, never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is The Rumpled One, over and out.